uh, the Madras Medical Mission in Chennai, led by Dr. Shivakumar and team. I think Shivakumar doesn't need much introduction. He's a very versatile and highly talented uh, interventional cardiologist with a, a, a lot, lot of experience in complex heart diseases. And we look forward to see him uh, managing some complex cases. First one is pulmonary valve implantation in severe pulmonary regurgitation. Second one is device closure of third sinus of Alfalva. Third is a device closure of perimembranous BSD. And then a discussion on a, and management of a patient with the right left son across a PFO with RV hypoplasia. And we have our esteemed panelists here, um, Dr. Mahawar Roy from Rabindranath Hospital, Tago uh, Hospital in uh, India, Man, uh, it's, uh, Calcutta. And uh, Dr. Johannes Rod uh, Nordmeyer from the German Heart Center, Berlin, Germany. And uh, Vivian Diamond from um, the Medical City Children's Hospital, USA. Welcome. Okay. Shiva, Shiva, can you hear us? Mario, I'm able to hear you very well. Okay, very good. Very welcome. And we look forward to uh, seeing you doing very interesting cases for sure. So, Sh go ahead. Sure. Thank you, Mario. We, here we have Dr. Srija, Dr. Pramod, uh, and a team of people who are assisting me. The first case will be a pulmonary valve implantation. It will be presented by one of my colleagues. PowerPoint, please. Our first case is venous P valve implantation for severe pulmonary valve regurgitation. This, uh, our case is a 13 year old boy who has complaints of effort intolerance class 2 for past six months and progressive increase in RV volume on cardiac MRI. He was diagnosed with tetralogy of fallow in infancy and Good underwent CMU. intracardiac repair with transhandler patch at one year of age in 2009. And subsequently, he underwent LPA balloon dilatation at three year of age in 2011. His x-ray showed a CTR of 58% with RA enlargement and ROT enlargement in the left arch. His ECG showed a sinus rhythm with a normal PR interval of 160 milliseconds complete RBB pattern with QRS duration of 120 millisecond and uh, axis of 90 to 105. His echocardiography showed uh, intact VSD patch, severe pulmonary regurgitation and a dilated RV with adequate bionicular systolic function. His cardiac MRI showed severe PR with PR regurgitant fraction of 52%, RV end diastolic volume indexed 174 ml per square meter and uh, RV end systolic volume indexed 83 ml per meter square, RV to LV end diastolic volume ratio of 2.5, RV ejection fraction of 52% and LV ejection fraction of 51%. This uh, RPA to LPA flow ratio was 60 to 40%. Uh, these uh, the following images are CT pulmonary angio images, the axial cut showing a pulmonary annulus of 28 mm and a distal MPA measuring 30 mm and the LPA origin stenosis measuring 13 mm. These are the sagittal, axial and coronal cuts, the dimension showing uh, annular dimension of around 28 to 30 mm. And uh, these are uh, similar images uh, with the same annular dimension of 28 to 30 mm. Uh, this is the RVOT angiogram lateral view indicating uh, uh, severe RVOT dilatation and uh, severe PR and the proximal RVOT measuring 28 mm, mid RVOT 28.5 mm, distal RVOT 31 mm, and the RVOT length of 30 mm. This is uh, another RVOT angiogram in RVO cranial view with the proximal measuring 28 mm, mid RVOT measuring 32.5 mm, distal measuring 44, 34, sorry, and uh, 30 mm long. The balloon sizing of RVOT was done with the uh, the lateral view, the waist diameter was 31 mm, and in uh, IO cranial, it was measuring 30 mm. Uh, the coronary angiogram to rule out LMCA compression showed no LMCA com compression, and uh, RC angiogram also ruled out RC compression. Th so the maximum balloon waist was 31 mm. So now we'll go for live demonstration of venous P valve percutaneous. 
so uh, Mario and Joseph, you would have heard the story. Uh, the indications of the pulmonary valve replacement is met because the right ventricular volumes indexed are more than 175 and the right to left ratio between the right ventricle and left ventricle is more than 2.5. The pulmonary regurgitant fraction is almost half of the blood volume is regurgitant. So he becomes a candidate for a pulmonary valve. Any questions about the indications? Okay. Uh, if, are there any questions from the audience for this case? The, the, uh, Mario, the, the issues that has been highlighted is that the left pulmonary artery needed a balloon dilatation at three years of age. And uh, now the left pulmonary artery ostium was measuring 12 millimeter, while the hilar pulmonary artery was 24 millimeter. The yes. MRI that, predictor. That's exactly the question I wanted to give you. Are you going to, to treat the origin of the left PA before I, implanting the valve or I, what? I think, I think that is important because uh, we, have to, uh, we are planning to bring the valve initially deployed in the left pulmonary artery and pulling it down because the left pulmonary artery was in direct line with the right ventricular outflow tract. And uh, hence it will be better if I get the left pulmonary artery ostia in like, balloon interrogated, probably with a, with a full dilatation. So with that in mind, we did one LPA angiogram now, this time. Can you show the picture? Okay. This is a, this is a, what we have also done is the left coronary artery, the catheter, we were not able to get a, get a stable position. The left coronary, uh, the, it was a very dextro-rotated aortic root with a posterior origin of the left coronary and our catheter was frequently slipping out and hence we decided to put in a coronary wire in order to stabilize the catheter there which will allow us to check the coronary when we want it. Of course, we have done it before during the balloon interrogation and it was fine, but to engage the left coronary was a little bit difficult, so we have wired it with a balanced middleweight woven four wire and kept a guide catheter in the aortic root. Next picture. So uh, we, we, were, we went in, into the left pulmonary artery and we were not able to identify a good uh, branch deep inside. So we made a small flush angiogram, next picture, and then identified a, a good vessel. This is the left pulmonary artery angiogram. Because of the pulmonary regurgitation, the contrast is getting washed away. However, I can, I can show you a still picture. Show the photo. So the left pulmonary artery, ostia was around 12. Hilum was around 21, 22. And the right was around 24. So we thought we will, we will inflate a balloon across the left pulmonary artery origin and then see whether it is uh, completely uh, like giving way. Is it a compliant lesion? Would you, yes. would you agree with our plan? Should I have one question about the LPA flow on MRI. You said uh, there was... 60 to 40. Uh, 46, yeah. 60, 40. So there is uh, Minimally, not significant no. difference between the flow between the right pulmonary artery and left yeah. pulmonary artery. Yeah, so, so the, the... Second question... The, the, so I agree, Joseph. The problem is not for the perfusion of the left lung, which reasonably is adequate. But when we are deploying the valve, the, the distal flare is conventionally opened out in the left pulmonary artery and it is slowly pulled into the confluence in a venous P valve because it is a self-expanding valve and it shortens significantly. So, uh, unless... Let me ask the panelists if they have some questions about this issue. You have the microphone? Yeah. And you? Hello, sir. Yep. This is Dr. Mohua from Arun Tagore Hospital, sir. Yeah, Mahua. Sir, is it really needed, sir? Dilatation of the left pulmonary artery, is it really needed? needed? Okay. okay. Already 60-40 circulation is going on. Okay. I was explaining that in order to get the valve distal flare fully opened across the left pulmonary artery and to pull it back into the main pulmonary artery, we will be needing... We will be needing 
a wide opening of the LPA. Otherwise, the flare will not re-enter. The venous valve is uh, designed in such a way that unless get me more compressed, go inside. Unless I get a wide open LPA origin, so go to there. I will sometimes not be able to get the carrot out. Mario, you would have used a lot of venous P valves. What is your op opinion? Will it be? Well, the, but it looks like that is very, very compliant lesion. Yes, yes. The, the balloon is inflating up to, I don't know, 20 millimeters or yeah. something like this. Yeah. So that's a very low resistant waste. Yeah. So, so we are happy about it. So now we are, we are probably all set. Keep it inside. All set to take the valve inside. Now, since we Did got... you repeat the angiogram after balloon inflation? No, since it is widely opening, I am not doing it again, uh, Mario. Do you think it is important? Because I thought if there is a residual significant waste, I will do an angiogram. But uh, I agree with you that it is a very compliant lesion. And so it is, it is easily giving way. So I, I, I'm happy to just take the valve directly inside. So the plan is to put a venous P valve, right? Yep. So and uh, the what, what about the size of the valve that you have chosen or you want to choose? Or uh, the there are any comments the from the audience or the panelists about the size of the valve to be used? The balloon interrogation, the balloon waste was 31 to 31.5 millimeter. And hence, we are planning the largest 36 valve because it is, it's usually 4 to 5 millimeters larger than the balloon waste that we take. We, we did a balloon uh, testing with the Amplads uh, sizing balloon, which is a compliant balloon. And hence, we would like to go 4 to 5 millimeters larger, which makes it 36 uh, diameter. How many of uh, you would yeah. uh, would like to have a 36 for a balloon waste of 31? Who, who's in favor of the 36 millimeter valve? Okay. Everybody agrees with that? Probably yes. But there is a very important question. Uh, the left or right pulmonary branch to be chosen for deploying in the valve. Yep. You have the wire in the left PA, but yep. why yep. to use the left PA and not the right PA? Take into account that the right PA is much larger. Yep. And probably the direction of the RV outflow draft is more favorable going from the right PA instead of the left PA. Or at least this, this is my question. Uh, in, in fact, we felt the other way, Mario. This, this RVOT was more in line with the left pulmonary artery. I will now show you, disable the injection. I will show you the line of my guide wire. See, it is, it is in fact straight going into the left pulmonary artery. And so we felt, based on the CT, MRI, as well as the angiogram and guide wire position, that this patient is, is more in line with left than with right. What, what do you, what is, uh, Mario, what, you, you have any, like, uh, uh, strong opinions? Well, actually, no, I mean, uh, you, you advance the delivery system very easily to the left PA, probably the, we have, you a, have done the same, the right PA. I think the question is whether, uh, what is going to be the appearance of the valve when you start deploying, that, that we see. Do you have another 10 at 15? But certainly the risk of occluding the right PA is close to zero because it's huge. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, any, any other panelists, any other questions? There is a question from uh, Johannes. Wait a second. Johannes. No, th that's not a question. I, I totally agree with you, Mario. I think th that's an important consideration to make, uh, whether or not there is a risk for obstruction, Vicky, because Keep it the closer. device, of course, Keep is fully covered. Up. And uh, you cannot really predict uh, what the flower looks like when you deploy the valve. And of course, if you've got some space, uh, that's certainly something which is, uh, which is good for you. Uh, uh, was, uh, are you concurring that left will be better? 
No, the question is whether... Uh, just will... a general consideration about uh, the issue of to be careful not to pollute the origin of the controllator pulmonary artery. But yep. you, you already started to deploy the distal portion of the valve, right? Yeah, we, are, we have deployed it in the left pulmonary artery. I'm going to find out just now. So now I have the... Uh, the distal flare, which is the open portion of the venous valve within the left pulmonary artery. I will probably deploy a little bit more and then slightly get the valve towards the... You can see that it's slowly getting opened better and better. Uh, inject again. Don't you want to pull the device a bit back because I'm, it I'm, I'm cannot going to deploy completely there? I'm going to do that, little bit. Yeah. At this position, I will open a little bit more. Angio? My covered well, portion... The covered portion is covering the, the right. It's still constrained into the left PA because it's small. Yes. 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 Get back a bit more. So I'm going to do that. That is the I portion, think, uh, that uh, is the portion which is the left pulmonary artery, which is a little narrowed, inject. Still constrained, the, the, the deployment is not uh, allowed due to the size of the left PA, yeah. I think. Yeah correct. yeah, correct. So now, we have got it. Now. Inject. So, now, uh, uh, come to RAO. You have to be ready. Okay. Come to RAO and uh, Srija, come this way. Hold, ask Srija to hold these two. Come that side. RAO. Make, yeah, okay. make, make an angiogram. Okay, now, Pramod. One second. Mm. 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 Are you happy with the appearance of the distal? Uh, one, second. one second. One second. One second. Now, right. do an angiogram. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, uh, the stand reconform a bit better. Okay. Now, yeah, come to yellow cranial. We have to load our injector a little bit. Ah, show the show the. Okay. No, give it, give it back. I want injection now. Give 15 at 15. Ready? Okay. So, come to, come back to RAO. So, now the the, the valve is getting oriented more towards the inflow. So, uh, Pramod, can you can you start deploying? Okay, same same RIO. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to fling open.
Yep. What? Once again, once again. OK. OK. Now, make an angiogram now. Actually, our, our, uh, our pigtail is strapped on the side, but I will make an angiogram and then take out the pigtail. Uh, OK. OK. The, go to elevo cranial. You're, you're not worried about the pigtails to be to remain entrapped into the stent. I will take it out, Mario. I will just check it and then you're and then take it out. I'll put a wire Are and you take want it out. To, rem to remove it uh, with the wire inside the, or right? Definitely with the wire. Thank you. So now get a thermo wire. Load contrast now. So I'm getting my wire across. So now I have my pigtail in the right ventricular outflow tract. Very good. Let me let me check one angiogram now in this left ventricle, right ventricular outflow tract. And then I have to concentrate whether I have the two eyes of my pulmonary v, uh, venous P valve already released from the delivery system. So now ready for injection? The position here looks okay to me. The, the Sorry, I, yep. I sure, there is a question from the audience. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think it's no complete release. Okay. You have to give another hole. Uh, I, I, I will, I will full release, only release. Yeah. Yes, the question is that the proximal portion of the stent is probably not fully released yet. So you have to be careful before. Yeah. Retrieving it because you take the risk of pulling everything back come to, into the right ventricle. Come to RAO. Come to RAO. More, more cranial. Okay. Ready for another injection. Okay. So now. We have to see whether we have released the eyes. Come here, Pramod. Pramod. Okay. So now we are going to concentrate on the two eyes. Come to AP view. AP. No, AP is not showing. Go back to LAO. So now I am going to use a Cine in order to find out whether I have released the valve fully. No injection? No, you load. Uh, excuse me, yep. can, you show, can you show us for a second for the audience the, the, your hands and uh, the delivery system, how it works, just to stay very, very briefly? Yeah, can you show the... Can you show it here? So in order to find out whether I have released or not, I am generally giving a rotation on my delivery system. I'm able to see one eye here. Ah, another eye also I'm able to see. Mario, I have seen both the eyes. One is at, uh, uh, one is at nine o'clock and another is at 3 o'clock. Are you able to see that? Magnify this. Magnify. Fully magnify. Mag uh, now you see that there is one, one eye very close to the, uh, the delivery knob, which is already released. Yes. And the exactly opposite to that, at 3 o'clock, I have another eye. So I am happy about the knobs. Mag down. Okay. Mag down. Mac down. So now I am 
going to slightly see whether I can move my, okay, come to RAO. Fluoro store this. All right. Come to AP view. Uh, show show the uh, re, re uh, I mean the uh, resheathing. So now you can you can show my hand. Yes, we see that. Very good. Okay. Very nice. So now I am taking out the sheet. I want a pigtail here. Get the pigtail. Excellent. Can, can you tell us the, the French size of the sheet? Which the, is inside the pen. The, the French size is 24. 3, 4. 2, 4, 24. 24. Yep. 2, 4. Show the valve well now again. Now you're going to advance the big tail in the PA. You're doing a pulmonary angiogram? Or yes. First, what? I will check the pressures. See the gradient, diastolic gradient between the left, put the, put the pressure on the uh, right ventricle. The, the marker pigtail is on the right ventricle. The other pigtail is now going into the pulmonary valve. Can you, can you show me in RAO? So I have two, so I two, have catheters, two catheters, one on one in the uh, right ventricle and one in the pulmonary artery. So while my colleague is getting both these calibrated, I am looking at the coronary artery. Come here, promote. Do uh, get me contrast here. Can you can you get both these sorted out? I want a hemodynamics. Go to, a, go to go to LAO cordal. Cordal. Okay, there is no coronary obstruction. So I'm disengaging the coronary catheter and taking it out. Now come to, uh, come to RAO again. Shiva, do you routinely do the coronary angiograms after the valve implantation or this is because of the slight anomalous uh, origin of the coronary artery? Uh, yeah, no, no, I, uh, actually, it is safer to do it because when the patient post-procedure complains of a chest discomfort, I, I, I feel it far more reassuring for myself to have seen the coronary artery immediately at the time of procedure so that I'll be much more uh, happily reassuring him. It's, uh, it's quite common practice that I have seen. Uh, in, um, uh, it is for your coronary, it's done for the patient's coronary. Uh, to some extent, yes, I would say that, uh, jo Joseph. Uh, you, you know, the, this, uh, the same thing happens with an AST device closure. Sometimes when you do an AST device closure, uh, in a patient who is say around 35 to 40 and then they complain of chest pain, you always have a lingering doubt at the back of your mind. So it is, it's better to shoot one and 
and since uh, some of the balloon expandable valves are known to cause coronary compression um, so this is the hemodynamics now make the hemodynamics big i am seeing a quite a good diastolic uh, gradient i will slightly pull it out okay so there is a there is a nice diastolic gradient show the show the hemodynamics big yeah so joseph it looks nice what do you feel excellent result so i'm going to make one 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 uh, one angiogram uh, now in the distal pulmonary artery go to elevo cranial about uh, about 5 uh, millimeters of mercury is there uh, joseph but the problem is i my pigtail is into the left pulmonary artery so that could be that could be causing a little bit of gradient now i am I'm, I'm slightly pulling my catheter inside come down give uh, 25 ml at 18 rate excellent very excellent result congratulations siva and your team thank you now uh, I'll let, uh, yeah. a big applause to them I will, I will again show the hemodynamics because now I have come out into the uh, main pulmonary artery. Connect it. Well, the result is hemodynamically perfect. But uh, let, me, let me ask you a question. Yep. Uh, the distal portion of the stand is a bit... Uh, well, not really very nice because uh, it's protruding into the origin of the IPA with no consequences because the flow is, is perfect. But don't you think that uh, uh, deploying the valve started from the IPA could have been uh, result in a better orientation of the device? That's just an hypothesis. Uh, actually, Mario, let me let me show you the picture bigger. Show the show this angiogram. Uh, the entire flared portion of the right pulmonary artery, uh, yeah, the entire flared portion of the venous valve is in the origin of right pulmonary artery. Allowing uh, freeze it now when the RPA is feeling better. Stop. So now, now Mario, here you can see what? that the whole of the uh, open sec cell of the uh, venous P valve is now exposed to the right. Yes, yes, absolutely. The flow is perfect, no question about that. Yeah. Very shak shakureshi has a question or a comment. Shiva, you know. just on Mario's point, have you got a lateral projection as well? I will do that now. Uh, of this? I was waiting oh, you for you, Shaq. I will do it now. <laughs> get, it, get into... Uh, uh, because it, the, it may look slightly uh, uncomfortable, but hemodynamically it, it works. Distal flares uncovered, so uh, the... Lateral uses the branch pulmonary arteries as an anchor. Yes. It also depends on the great discrepancy of the size yes. of the two branches in this yes. particular uh, case. Uh, because the, the right branch is almost double or three times on the left. Yes. But whichever way, whether you deploy it by the right or the left, the, the central portion of the valve is going to take the configuration matching the pulmonary artery, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So it will orientate itself. On the lateral, that looks beautiful compared with the uh, cranial LAO. And there you see on the distal flare uh, is the right pulmonary artery goes into the picture there. And so it's just sitting across it a bit, and that's it. It looks really good. Yeah. Absolutely. The hemodynamics are perfect. Shaq, the... Uh, you honest, uh, question, as a question for you. Uh, Shaq, so uh, the, the, uh, the, the distal flare was not looking very good a short while ago, but the moment they knew that Professor Shaq Kureshi is entering the hall, the distal flare reoriented. And for, for, the, for the participants in the hall, let me tell you, Dr. Shaq Kureshi was my mentor, and he's the person who is the principal investigator of this venous P valve. And he needs a lot of uh, credit for having made this wonderful valve. I'm again showing the hemodynamics. Show the hemodynamics big. 
so we we have uh, yeah, 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 another yet another wonderful venus p valve in the other lab so let me request my colleague to give the powerpoint presentation of the second patient okay so you have well in our chart we have uh, other uh, patients for, actually, for, you know, for and other pulmonary valve but you changed the program yeah because because of certain logistic reasons we changed it and also, yeah, okay. yeah, wait, wait. yeah, one of the patients could not be done due to COVID and uh, some, some related issue. I see. There is another question for you. I think the last question uh, from Marcelo Rivarola from Buenos Aires. Uh, would you like to do uh, an angioplasty in the future of the left pulmonary artery and when? The was remaining normal and hence I will not be interested to middle around in the left pulmonary artery now if the if the perfusion difference was more than 30 to 35 percent i would have thought about it but i would like to do it uh, uh, at least after six months to one year however in this patient i feel i may not do it because it is 60 to 40 is the perfusion now again i let me let me tell you the reason why i did a lpa balloon dilatation was to ensure that my distal flare of the venous P is going to fall back from the left pulmonary artery into the confluence without any difficulty. If I had found a significant waste during the z balloon dilatation at four to five atmospheres, I would have thought about stenting the left pulmonary artery and deploying the valve from the right side. Mario, any thoughts? Oh, yes, that, that's very good. Then in a final question from uh, Johannes for you. I actually think that's a very good suggestion that you just made, just to review the balloon configuration when you actually uh, dilated the LPA. And the other thing is to consider, do you think that's got an impact on the valve duration, let's say the longevity of the valve performance itself? I actually don't think so because the gradient is quite little. But, but again, this is probably something which could be considered in a case where the gradient was higher. Okay. Uh, uh, Nord, Nord Mayer, I, I agree with your point. If there is a significant LPS stenosis, it is going to affect the longevity of the valve because pulmonary regurgitation tends to be more if there is a distal pulmonary artery stenosis. However, in this particular patient, during the hemodynamics, we were observing that the gradient between the left pulmonary artery and the RV was almost around 9 millimeters. But when I pulled it back into the main pulmonary artery, it reduced to five. So it's almost like four millimeters of mercury across the LPA. So it is not very significant. Yeah. Okay. Can if I, there are no additional questions for you. Congratulations yep. again. Thank and you. For a excellent and result. I would like my colleague to, to, to now show the PowerPoint presentation of the.